Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the New England Town Council regular meeting of Tuesday, September 13th, 2022. I'd like to call the meeting to order at 7.04 p.m. If you would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, if you're able. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We can move now to roll call, please. Councilor Braverman? Here. Councilor uh, Mayor DeGrico? Councilor Taylor? Here. Councilor Donahue? Here. Councilor Mankey? Here. Councilor Nagel? Here. Councilor Page? Here. Councilor Rada? Here. Mayor Delhue? Here. We'll continue on. Next item this evening is approval of the agenda. I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda as written. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilor Arvada, seconded by Councilor Camillo. Uh, is there any discussion or changes? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Mayor Draco, absent. I keep, you got to keep me on track. I'm supposed to say that, right? Okay. All right, next item this evening is public participation. Any member of the public may participate. Um, we do have a three minute time limit. Um, there is a bar on the screen for anybody that's watching that helps kind of keep track of the timer. Um, we just ask that you state your name and address for the record. If you are in the room, you're welcome to come forward to the microphone. And then we usually try to um, intersperse if there is anyone online that is participating. So if you are in the Zoom app, you can raise your hand in the attendees window. Um, and if you are on your phone, star nine will do the same function so that we know you want to be acknowledged. All right. Welcome, Dr. Kelly. 641 Willard Avenue. Um, all of you are my uh, neighbors, uh, neighbor, uh, friend, friend. Uh, I think you're my neighbor and so are you. And this guy works hard downtown. Uh, I, like, uh, I like him a lot. Look, uh, I'm here to talk to Keith Chapman, really. Uh, I want all you guys to get reelected because you're doing an enormously great job, trust me. If you're not paid, you come to listen to us, and I all want you to get it. But uh, what's happening with town manager is not good. You raised some points the other day, uh, and you were kind of shot down, but your points are really valid. And, you know, we have to just, just cut the Republican, Democrat, Independent. This is a hometown, and we have to listen to him, what he's saying about the town uh, charter. And, and respect that and be respectful. And you all will be respectful as well because you just are here to hear us and we're here to speak up. I don't have time to come here, but I do come here because I have issues that Keith Chapman, I like him. He's a great guy. I've, I, I know him personally, but he has to uh, work with the people. And I've, I've concluded he's just not a people person. He's not interacting with his people. We, he looks at us as cars to tax and buildings to tax. He's not looking at the personal side of this. I've asked him for a year and a half to look at the cemetery. Again, I'm here as a lion landowner, protecting my cubs, my property. My private property is being invaded by the cemetery. And there's a picture here of you know, Mr. DeMeo tearing a hole in the fence. I've given very valid uh, complaint to the zoning enforcement. I don't have time, but you know that's what I sent them. And, you know, I went to the zoning enforcement. I talked to the police department. It sits on Keith's desk and he's not acting. I've, I've had to hire a lawyer now. I'd like I have time and money to hire a lawyer to snoop around this problem and close it because I don't have time endlessly to work on this cemetery hole, but it's right next to my property. They've built an illegal driveway. Let's just close that fence and be done with it and not argue. And, you know, I'm not here. And Mr. DeMeo calls me the enemy. Thank you, Mr. DeMeo. I'm not the enemy. I'm just speaking up to protect my property. He tells me he wants to buy my land. And he says, well, I'll just take it by uh, eminent domain. My office manager came to that meeting with him, right? I can't keep quiet anymore about it. I mean, I have to come talk. I don't want to be public. I don't want my name attached to any of this, but I have to. You know, Keith just can't. I said, by the end of last month, let's just get this resolved. I, I now have a lawyer <laughs> because it's my property. I abut the cemetery. I respect the, the cemetery and it's not being respected. And nothing happens. I got a pile of letters. Nothing happens. Okay, two. Uh, I see you guys always stand up with uh, uh, Richard Hayes. You guys put on your helmets and the silver shirt. You'd love standing up with him, but you will not stand up for the local people who work here, live here, and invest here. You're only standing up with the out-of-town developers. You're giving them big tax breaks, 
and you're uh, you're photographing with them, uh, and and you won't even like I've asked twice now to remove this no pedestrian crossing sign. I don't even get a call back from Ryan Dean. Okay, he's the police officer that interface with DOT. He put up a no pedestrian crossing sign. I like that down. I want those signal lights at the stop and shop put back. Somebody, Keith, must have talked to somebody at DOT and and uh, this police officer to to block my development on my property at 49th and Road. I'm going to be presenting that case pretty soon. I don't want that to be an obstacle. But Keith, you know, you keep bringing up this roundabout. It got killed in 2019, and you're bringing it up with the engineer and say, hey, let's get that going again. Lastly, I don't have time, but I've really spelled it out well. And, and I don't want this to hit the newspapers, but what's going on here with this uh, uh, this uh, alignment with Maple Hill and alumni is truly unethical. You are now uh, asking, Keith, you're asking the engineer to go to the state, use my tax dollars to give a private developer from Torrington named Mr. Martin J. Satansky, 2.3 million or more to build on his private property, a road to connect Maple Hill to alumni. If that developer wants to use his good own money and risk his own capital, like I do, then let him do so, I can't stop him. But you can't help him by giving him state money to 2.3 million to build his road on his residential land that amounts to an acre. The uh, the uh, property streets right here, and it's very unethical because it, it wasn't done with the public knowledge. Again, that's why I'm here, because you guys don't tell anybody before it happens. And then, well, we have the money, so let's just make it happen. But it's unethical to be funding a private developer on his residential land between Maple Hill and alumni. You know, in 2016, they fought it down. So can the public come to these Tuesday morning meetings, please? And let's have the public in on your development plans every Tuesday. Okay. Lastly, all that does is it opens up four more residential yeah, acres for him. I'm over time, and I'm sorry. Up, I but this is, I don't want this to make the newspapers because it will. It's a very unethical what's going on here. Other people who live there, they've talked about it. And again, uh, we need the Magna Carta sign, not, hey, it's great that you came, but we need this stuff closed. We can't carry it on. I don't, I'm time to keep coming down here. I know. Thanks, Donio. Okay. Uh. Thank you. I do have one person online, so I'm going to take that hand, and then whoever else in the room wants to come up, we just like to take turns. Ms. Mazzacoli, if you would just state your name and address for the record. Susan Mazzacoli, and now a resident of West Hartford um, for the last three days, <laughs> and, and a 47-year 47 uh, Newington resident. Uh, the reason tonight I'm calling is to say thank you. First, I want to start out with the most recent thank yous. Uh, I want to thank Gary Furstenberg, the Newington Engineering Department, and Robert Hillman, the Newington Highway Department, for such great customer service. A lot of issues that happened in the middle of my move, and they were extremely helpful. They returned my emails and even ended up with hope the move went well. Um, I also want to thank, of course, my favorite town employee, James Kupinski probably the best town clerk in all of Connecticut. And I'm hoping that he stays with us for a very, very long time. Unless of course he wants to move to West Hartford, which I would be happy. <laughs> now they're elected. <laughs> um, I would also, um, I'm trying to look at my notes here. I wanna be thorough. I wanna also thank our wonderful police department led by Chief Clark. Um, one of my most wonderful times in all of Newington experiences was with the Newington Citizen Police Academy. It was such an experience. I learned so much and it was entertaining and um, just amazing uh, class that I hope that they bring back again. Um, I also want to thank <coughs> Chief Parker and the fire department as we most recently witnessed how, what a wonderful job they do protecting our citizens and our homes. And of course, um, at great peril to their own lives. And uh, so just thank you to our police, our, our fire department. And then of course, our Newington Emergency Medical Services, which have been for my family a couple times, unfortunately, but they were there and they were just wonderful. And the fact that they're volunteers on weekends and put in all those hours and help all of the Newington citizens is just amazing. Um, and then of course, I wanna lastly end by saying thank you to our town council and our board of education. 
Um, you all know your volunteers, but most people, most citizens don't. And when I posted all your bios on my Facebook last year, when you were all running, so many people, my friends who never vote, all of a sudden maybe got interested in voting. But what shocked them the most was the fact that you do it all for free. Uh, you don't even get, you know, mileage, nothing. And all the hours that you put in, not just on the town council, but all the commissions and committees you belong to, and also our Board of Education members. And then I lastly want to say, vote for Marie Fox for town clerk. Thank you. We wish you all the best in your new uh, community. Come back and visit. Come up. We do have one another hand online, but we'll just take our turns. Good evening. My name is Brett Papacino. I, I grew up in this town and went to uh, center school, St. Mary's, of course, the high school. And I've seen a lot of improvements in, in this town. I was gone for 15 years. I had a house in New Hampshire. I moved, but I decided to move back because my wife and I loved this, loved this town. And, but I cannot see, uh, this is about the uh, the railroad station and alumni road coming in, living on, on Old Farms Drive. It's, it's, uh, I think that's going to be a straightaway speedway for cars cutting across that from Willard Avenue going across behind my neighbor's houses because we hear the traffic now going by. It's going to be twice as bad. And, and there it's going to make my property go down even more. Why build a train station when there's one right down the road in Berlin and the other way in Hartford? I don't see anything. I think it's going to be a bus. Like when I came back, I saw that fast track. I said, what is that? And everybody says it's money out the window. And I think the train station is going to be the same same way. The traffic on, on 175 going east comes off Route 9. You've got to do something about that because they go, how many times I have the green light to get out of my road and it's it, they, go, they do 60 miles an hour on that road. They seem to know when there's a police officer down the other end, but uh, they come off, like I say, they come off nine, and if there's construction on, on Cedar Street, which it always is lately, it's bumper to bumper, and then they creep through the red light. Now, I can't get out of my, I've been there three times, you can't get out. It's just, so how's it going to be now, getting out, out of there with all that traffic coming from Alumni Road? So I think it's going to hurt the town putting that, that station in. So that's my piece. Thank you so much. Thank you. <coughs> I'm going to take the one that's online really quickly, then we'll get back in the room again. The next person calling mm -hmm. in is Manu Chopra. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I apologize. Are you there? You can say your name and address for the record. One more time, I did unmute, it's, well, they unmuted. Are you there? Would you like to participate in our meeting? Manu Chopra? Okay, we'll continue on then. Okay. Anyone else in the room that would like to come up? <clears throat> Brian Tatch Major, 373 Lloyd. Uh, I'm just totally against this uh, alignment of the uh, Maple Hill there, the train station. Um, I like I uh, like I said, uh, I used to work over at Tech. Um, there was money being generated over there, people working, paying taxes, Social Security, all this stuff. That's, that is going to be a bust. It's like the busway. It's free now. And there's still nobody running this thing. Um, it's you got you need local uh, entrepreneurship. Let let the let the private enterprise take the reins. You will see things because when people put their money up, 
they you know, put it into something. This is this is ridiculous. What you guys, you know, something I, I really I, I I don't know too much about this. I want to end with this. Um, there's something about thirty thousand dollars that somebody got a. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it a kickback. That this, you're, you you got this town developer or or um, these people coming in, and I I come to these meetings after everything's done. I want to know what's going on so I could have a say while it's being said, because if it's a town designer, let him do the, you know, and I'm paying taxes for, you know, for all of this stuff. I, I Listen, this is not right. I need to, you know, I'd like to know what's going on, have a say, and uh, I'll end with that. Anyone else that would like to come forward is welcome. Good evening. Good evening. First of all, I have to thank you guys because you are the big bosses of Newington. <laughs> I live in this town since 1979, Old Farm Drive. My name is Antonio Emerald. And it's the third time that I came over doing my opposition to what the town wants to do. The first one was the highway that was created by the Department of Transportation to do in Route 175. I'm from that time that was only one car or two cars passing each other, and nobody shoes Newington. After the highway, what we did, I think we did bad for the business. People pass so fast that I even myself <laughs> not put too many times in that sidewalk in Route 175 because someday it's going to be a disaster. And I don't see police over there making sure that people obey the rules. Second time I came over was the bus, the, the fast transit, the fast track transit. Today I saw a guy inside of one of the buses. I want to know where the intelligence are that come up with that system. I think it was just to spend money and have five or six more jobs available for people to drive the bus. That's it. I, uh, don't get me wrong. The first, the first month I, I went to Hartford three times. I like it. And the parking lot was always full of cars. Now I've not been there. I don't know what's going on. But the bus over here, you could count the people inside. Mostly are zero. Now we have the junction that you guys want the line, the Maple Avenue with the Aluminum Road. And the, 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 when I look at those, the, the piece of land was left so the, the the road could go around the three houses that are there, I think is very bad. Department of <coughs> Transportation should do to Newington what they did to West Hartford, New Britain Avenue, where they had lights 50 feet apart and they ran an agency. They are be able to solve the problem and not do what they want to do. They own Newington, I guess. I like to know also if there's, any, if there's anybody in any committee in the town of Newington that worked for the board or for the DOT before, because that could be a problem, a conflict of interest. And uh, nothing that you guys want to do there, I agree with. That's my third time that I hope I'm not right this time that you guys do good for the city. But I'm against that. I think it's more bad than good. Thank you very much. Excuse me. Anyone else is welcome to come up? Uh, yes. Uh, hello. Hi. Can you just state your name and address, please? Maria Amaral. I'm his wife. And um, we were away. And yesterday, that's when I got a little piece of paper that somebody had the, 
the, the pleasure of putting on my door and I was very surprised of what was going on. And I want to thank you, that person, at least I know what I read about it in May, more or less, that you were planning of doing the, um, the train station. I love progress. I love going on trains. I think the train, it's the way to go for the future. But here, I'm sorry, I really don't see it. Like the fast track, to me, it's a waste of money. And I think sometimes just because a government agency has a few million dollars, they waste it so bad. And I am not a person of wasting. I am a taxpayer. I love the New England, but I'm not liking it anymore. That's a matter of fact. I went to the shore today to look for something because I just find out that behind where we live, it's going to be a, um, a low income housing. And I don't have anything against progress. It's just I believe in New England, we are like sitting ducks for everything. Let's dump this in New England. Let's build a highway in New England. I used to come with my kids from old farms to, to the library, walking, by bikes. Can you do it now? As much as I love to walk, which we do, I'm petrified. I hold myself sometimes against those walls because the cars are going so fast. Now, with this technology of today, I don't see why don't we have cameras, fine people. I would be fine to believe me uh, because I do go fast sometimes, you know, you just go, but it's wrong. It's wrong because uh, um, this town should be protected. The people that have little business or small business or bigger business doesn't matter. They should be protected. I don't stop anymore, you know. Um, so that's what I want to say. I, I don't want New Winton to be the pink house of New London. And we are the pink house of uh, that. That they have that agenda. They, they are very powerful, but they did mess up New Winton. And I don't want them to mess up anymore. It's just what I have to say. I want New Winton to be as pretty as it was like 30 years ago, but it isn't anymore. Um, and um, I think we have the potential to do what other towns do around here. We just have to stand together and maybe you guys have to be more powerful and don't let them really tell tell you to what they want to do. So let's save New Winton because we need to. Anyone else that would like to come up? <clears throat> yes. Welcome. Hi, my name is Ann Lennon. I'm a resident of Newington for 21 years. I live on Dowd Street, so this would directly affect me. Um, I don't, um, this whole train thing that everybody's talking about, um, I guess I don't understand, like, like if I feel like the whole bus thing got pushed through really, really quickly, and I don't know how all that happened. I, I applaud you guys for taking your time and, you know, donating it to Newington because in my life I'm very busy and I don't have a lot of time to, and I'm sure you're all in the same boat. So yeah, I miss a lot of things that are going on, but I do feel like things are pushed through very quickly without uh, residents knowing kind of what's going on. Cause I don't feel like I know much of, of this at all. Uh, just like kind of little rumors, you know? So I'm wondering what um, what is the plan? Why is this happening kind of thing? Like the 
bus station was a flop. It hasn't made any money. It's not bringing any income into Newington. It's made it louder. We can now hear the train that goes through on the tracks there that we never could before because they cut down all the trees. It was a complete flop, but it was pushed right through. Nobody even knew about it. And the same thing with the VA housing. Nobody knew much about that either. And that was pushed right through. So I did get um, a little note on my door and it made me really scared, to be honest, of how quickly things get pushed right through without any of the residents really even knowing what's going on. So um, that's my say. And, uh, you know, I'd like to commit to knowing more of what's happening in Newington and I'd like to be directed to be able to find out that. So I'd like to ask you guys, like, where would I find out where this plan, who came up with this plan? Why do they think it's a good idea? What, like, what's, I'm sure they have a reason for this. They think it's a good idea. Somebody thinks it's a good idea. And I don't know if they live in Newington. <laughs> so that's, uh, so I guess you can't talk back to me and give me uh, guidance. We have an opportunity after public participation to respond in general to any okay. questions. All right. Well, that's my question. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Oh. Anyone else is welcome to come up. Uh, Andrew Robinson, Down Street. Okay. Um, my main issues are I'm living in Newington for 34 years now, moving up from New York. And uh, when we came up here, the taxes were $1,600 is what I was paying. Now it's $4,500, which I don't mind for schooling because I actually have a, a special needs daughter who needs the, the services that are, are provided through the so that's one issue. Uh, the problem we have also coming out of our street, I'm, on, uh, so I'm right towards the end of Dowd and Willard, is it's almost impossible to make a left turn out of there. And now with the additional traffic that will be coming through, I mean, alumni at the moment, it is a cut through that people do use <laughs> when the gates are open, they do use it. It's gonna be a lot worse. And um, at the moment, I'm quite happy that the value of my house has been going up and it's fantastic, but I think I feel this is going to reduce that. If we're going to have too much traffic or what's going to be coming through to make it not exactly the lovely neighborhood that we had in the first place. And now to become uh, more of a speedway or just uh, having people coming through that we don't even know. They're just uh, cutting through town to town. I have people, when they come on Dow Street, it's a speedway right now. We were lucky to get a stop sign years ago, but right now they're still doing 50 miles an hour with less than four houses to get to the end of the street. I mean, it's, when I come home from work, I, I actually stay at 20 miles an hour with my blinker on because I'm tired of people trying to push me off my own street itself because I have to live there. Um, I can't have my... Uh, daughter come outside uh, even to play only because it's just too fast, the street itself. Um, I heard also about the uh, the train, if that issue was going to come through and the area where it would be going through Sousa, a heat treating company. Now that's a very good company. Um, I'm actually in, in the manufacturing business. So uh, these are the companies that we need to keep in our town, which is very important. Um, these days for aerospace and uh, commercial work, it's uh, very important to have these established companies. And it's not just like you could pick up and go anywhere. When you're doing any heat treating, you have to have all the proper permits and it takes a long time to move into that space. I know where they were before, and this is a tremendous uh, support for Newington itself. So it would be a shame if we had to do anything against them uh, to kick them out. They're a very good company. They're going to grow with us. And we want to have more of this, especially to help to pay our taxes as well. So that's my say at the moment. I just appreciate you listening to me. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would like to come forward. Okay. Our agenda. 
Um, the next item, no one received any email correspondence, correct? No, we have not. Um, we'll continue on now to remarks by counselors on public participation. I have several hands up. Um, so this is where we get to hopefully answer some of your questions or at least comment on what you've, what you've told us. Um, Councilor Donahue. Uh, first off, I, I just have to say that a, a, a personal attack on our town manager was, was not warranted. Okay, the man is busy. And you know if you have a problem with Keith, please take it up with Keith, not in public. Um, second, uh, I agree. If it's just put a chain on the fence, put a chain on the fence and let's be done with it for the drive through from the, doesn't seem like it's that difficult to me. Um, for the Cedar Street realignment, um, this this has been around since they built those houses. All right, this, this plot plan has been out there. I live at 28, I live right across the street from it. So I, I know all about it. I know all about the traffic on Cedar Street. So it, it, it's not new. This is not something that just popped up the other day. This plan has been in place since they put the houses in. If that guy could have built another house at 45, he would have seen he was selling at the time for $350,000. I would have built a house there if I could have. So that's not new. Um, you know, the busway, I think we talked about the busway for 20 years, more than 20 years. All right, so these are things that just pop up. The development, Dakota is, I agree, the busway is a bust. Okay, I'm with you on that. I mean, I took it once. That's, it's good enough. I said I did it. Um, you know, the Dakota property or the low-income housing, that was, God, I don't want to start talking about that, 20, 2015, 2016? Yeah, somewhere somewhere right. in there. And we we didn't want it. We got sued. We lost. It's just the way the state is with the low income housing. So I guess my final question is, you know, we, you know, we put things in the paper. There's stuff on the town website. I, I don't know what else we can do to, you know, and maybe afterwards we can talk. And if there's ideas of how you would like to be informed, maybe we can take those up. But, you know, I just said, we're, we're all volunteers here. We don't, don't have the time to put everything in there. But if there's... Yeah, something that you know, you know, or you have to know where to look on the website, or you know, the TPZ, or whatever. You know, as a council, you know, we get the information and we talk to TPZ. TPZ is where it's at for building stuff, right? We listen, we'll pass it to TPZ, but we really don't control street signs and things like that. All right, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Page. Thanks, Mayor. Um, a couple of comments. First of all, thank you very much, everybody, for being here today. I really appreciate you taking your time out to speak to us with your concerns. I, whenever I hear someone express concern that they didn't know about something or how did they find out more information, I, um, prior to doing this volunteer work, I wasn't as plugged in and wasn't always sure where to look. Obviously, um, we have our website, like everybody does our town website. And with people's busy schedules, sometimes it's hard to deliberately plug in and scroll through and find exactly what the issue is or what the um, agenda might be of any given meeting. And I think we can always continue to um, try to do better to publicize not only our meetings, but the agenda items that are coming up. And uh, I know that the town manager and this council, previous councils have been, and I believe uh, James and so forth, have been trying to find better ways to communicate to you about what issues are on the table that we'll be discussing. And I think we need to just do a better job of that. And with social media, with our website and so forth. And I, I just encourage you all and anyone else listening to this meeting to continue to go to those sources, uh, whether it's Facebook or, or the um, website and, and uh, be plugged in when you can to what's happening and, and come to like you did tonight to express your views. Um, the, I guess the only other comment I would have is about the term low income housing. I, I disagree with that characterization of that property. I, my understanding is that that's affordable housing. And I think the, the, the implication of the term low income has a history to it. And some people think of that in a way that is derogatory and maligns the people that live there as if they don't have a right or shouldn't have a right to be in our town. And I don't, 
think you or Councillor Donahue intend that to be the case. I can't um, speak for you, but that's my reaction when I hear that term. My understanding with that property, as with other efforts by, by town planning and zoning and other developers in town, when, when we, we have had properties um, incorporate a percentage of affordable housing units, which is the request since the statute was established in 89 by all towns, and some towns don't want any affordable housing, is, is that we provide an opportunity for people who should and do have a right to be here and afford to be in this fantastic town. I've said before, I'll say it again, that's one of the many reasons, in addition to our great schools and great parks and rec and all the services we have, why I, my wife and I moved here to raise our four kids, because it was affordable and we could afford our ranch house. And so I didn't think of my house as low income, it's affordable. And um, I, and maybe that's just my issue that I need to, to work on, but I, I, I welcome affordable housing. I think all towns should do it. I think in Fairfield, they're especially seeing pushback. I think there are reasons for that, that are ugly. And I think those need to be challenged. And I'm proud of the work that um, leaders here have done and have done before me to welcome everybody to Newington of all income levels, of all um, walks of life. And so thank you, Mary. Thank you. Councilor Rada? Yes. Um, again, um, as I mentioned the last time you folks were here, thank you very much for coming. Uh, we take our time, you're taking your time. So, uh, you know, I appreciate that and celebrate the fact that you want your voices to be heard. Uh, we need that in our community. We need that locally. We need that statewide and we need it nationally. Um, I just want to address a couple of, of issues, some that have already been, been raised. Um, one place that I encourage all of you to go, uh, whether you do it by Zoom, by phone or, or in person, is to attend the um, town planning and zoning meetings. Uh, I'm one of the two liaisons from the council who, who are part of that commission. We have no vote, we have no voice, we, unless we speak up as a private citizen during public participation, uh, which you folks have done. But there is public participation at all the commission meetings, both at the beginning and then towards the end of the meeting. So, and, and this is where you're going to hear information about development, Private development is not voted on by the council. And I, I think uh, Mayor Del Buno uh, made a point of that and very clearly explained that uh, at our last council meeting, that, that we don't have a vote, that that comes through town planning and zoning. Also the conservation commission uh, addresses issues related to the ecology and the, and the environment. Another commission um, that I encourage you to um, if you don't want to go in person, but it, at least listen and hear because the issues are coming up in these commissions and this is where you're going to be gathering additional information. Okay, so I encourage that. <laughs> in terms of, um, again, I want to reiterate what um, Councillor Page had to say that I challenge the term affordable house, I, I mean, low income housing. What we see being built in Newington in some situations is affordable housing. And I applaud that. I applaud our uh, diversity in our community. I, my parents bought a house here in 1956. I'm living in that house now. I grew up here, moved away, like I think one, one of you mentioned, and, and then moved back again. Um, and I applaud the diversity that, that we see and continue to see. And affordable housing, I would be looking for affordable housing. This means that it's, a, it's an opportunity for people to um, have an apartment or a condo or a house that maybe then they can live and raise a family, maybe um, buy another house, participate, um, and be part of an even more, an even further growing community that we have here in town. Um, low income does have, it has a different ring to it. And I refuse to use that term and that's, that's not correct. Um, so I, and I would like to have folks again, take a look at what's being built and what exactly the intent is of some of, some of this development. I'm certainly not anti-development. I want to see it 
happen in town, but I want to see it done in a thoughtful, appropriate way. Uh, there has been no decision on a train station. It's been talked about how many years did we say? Long before I was on the council, because oh, this many. is only my first year. Long before I was on the council. <laughs> 20. So, you know, this, this is something that, and it comes up periodically. There has been no decision made. We, we occasionally will we'll discuss this at our council meetings, but there has been no decision made as to number one. And, and this really is also dependent upon the, the state of Connecticut whether there will even be a train stop here in Newington, and if so, where it could possibly be. Um, that is not a fait accompli. That is not something that we have raised that we intend to vote on. And if this is how you're being informed, you're being misinformed. So I want to try and we all want to give you appropriate information. So I'm really glad that you're here and you can hear some of this and certainly challenge us and ask more questions. Thank you. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, Cedar Street, I drive Cedar Street. Um, I remember when it was, my father worked at what had been Atlantic Machine and Tool um, and retired from there. And I used to go and pick him up sometimes when I finally got my driver's license. And I don't think any, I think all of us have complaints about Cedar Street and about the traffic. Um, it's something that we have discussed and we will continue to discuss and uh, think of, and we can we can ch talk to um, town manager Chapman about the best way to approach this and what can occur. And again, it's a state road, it's not a town road. It's the state DOT, Department of Transportation that um, would have to make any changes that might occur that we would request. Um, and I think the one one other thing, and I think at the very beginning it and pardon me if I if I if I didn't perceive this correctly, but my perception of a comment was that we all, meaning all the counselors here and on Zoom, um, vote in a block that none of us have a mind of our own, that none of us question what's going on that none of us attend other meetings and none of us speak, raise our voices. And that is absolutely incorrect. Um, we may not always agree, but we agree to disagree and we do it in a civil way and in an informed way. And I appreciate you all coming and continue to come and ask your questions and we will give you straight answers and we will give you all the information that we have available. So thank you very much. Thank you. Councilor Nagel. Uh, thank you. One thing about not being the first one to talk that uh, people who are very learned here tend to say a lot of what uh, I uh, probably would have said also. So I, I won't reiterate it. I do agree that we, we do want you here and we do appreciate your concerns and we um, don't take lightly what you say. But once again, you have to con uh, you have to know that there are things that we uh, have a saying but we don't have a final say and we don't have a a, a vote for uh, other met, other uh, town commissions and whatever have been mentioned uh, and many of these decisions have to do with the state uh, in terms of roads and uh, in terms of what is done and what is not done we can voice our concerns at times they ask for our concerns but um, it really comes down to uh, uh, the state the uh, uh, in some cases, forcing us into doing things that we may not want to do. Um, um, a fast track, uh, um, uh, the busway, uh, may have personal opinions about, but it was something that came from monies uh, from on high. And I agree with you, monies came from somewhere. Some people may think it was worthwhile spent, not, not but uh, we as a council, only have a certain amount of control as to what happens and what doesn't happen, especially when it has to do with property that is owned by st the state. Uh, fortunately and unfortunately, um, the town of Newington uh, has many state roads uh, uh, that run through it. And uh, we just cannot make a decision as to what is to be done or not done uh, with those roads. Uh, we have to go to the state and uh, we have had long experiences over the years in this council, whatever, of 
of uh, talking about and about giving comments and input in terms of what you have been talking about uh, uh, tonight. Um, so it isn't something that's been taken lightly in most cases what's, uh, what's happened, uh, but they are concerns that repeatedly come up over and over again. And a perfect solution um, is one that is very difficult to come to and probably never will. Um, I've been on this council off and on for more than uh, 12, 15 years, and these things have come up over and over again. And uh, we can only modify some things. We can, uh, when they involve the, the state, we can only recommend or give our opinion based upon uh, what is best for the community at large. Uh, but ultimately, it, it is uh, up to the state to determine um, many of these things. Um, opening uh, the gate on Alumni Road or not going through it is, is something that's been de debated left and right. There are pros and cons. Uh, 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 at one time, it was a political issue many years ago. I won't go into that. But at, at any rate, it, it is it is not something new, nor are any of the things that you've mentioned necessarily something new. Uh, many of you may be aware of it in a short amount of time, but it is something that the town has been concerned about, past town managers and uh, those on the council who were here or those that have been here when we haven't been here have, have been trying to, to cope with those problems uh, off and on for many years. I wish there was an easy solution. I talked rather broadly because people hit upon details that uh, I concur with uh, more or less, um, except uh, uh, one thing, more thing about uh, Dakota. The t it was mentioned before and it was talked extensively over many times and the town attempted to block the Dakota once again, because we only had control over safety uh, to that property, to Cedar, uh, we cannot, as a council, uh, formally tell them that you cannot build whatever you can't build on private property. Um, that may be good in some circumstances and may not, but I know there is the general feeling uh, that indeed perhaps that wasn't the best place for safety uh, and uh, for um, the town as a whole, given how um, um, Cedar Street is such a, a traffic nightmare many times during the day. Um, I'll leave it there at that. There are other things, but I'm sure they will come up in the future concerning it, and hopefully we can resolve some, and, and, and hopefully there aren't rumors that come up for things that we have no idea happened or we thought were settled, just like uh, some of you have mentioned over the the last few council meetings that you've attended. Um, and um, thank you once again for being here and listening to me ramble on a little bit. Councilor Camillo. Been here since 1963. And uh, in 1989, we had a town hall meeting for the busway. And in 2015, it finally opened. The train station is gonna happen in the next 20 years. It'd be nice if it did, but where? We don't want to lose commercial or industrial land. I was on the zoning board when um, the affordable housing on Cedar Street came through. And one of the problems was we wanted to see a better building, not just a stick building. We wanted to see an extra floor, fire retention. And that's one of the reasons we stopped it. Um, Fen Road, no pedestrian crossing. Well, you have to have a sidewalk there first. The state's not going to put one in. They didn't want to put one in along Cedar Street either. They wanted us to do it. The gate, well, the gate wouldn't be open except the homeowners on um, Bullard Avenue were complaining that they were taking the parks and rec lawn equipment and going down the sidewalk and calling the police and having complaints that way. So they opened the gate there. So they just go right through the high school. And Maple Hill, that's been going on since 2015. And I came up with zoning. It wasn't the town manager. It was zoning had that idea. If you guys want information, we're really easy to get a hold of. We have phones. We have businesses in town. Come and have a cup of coffee. We'll talk to you. And we'll give you the right information. Thank you. Yeah, just a shameless plug. Um, for uh, NCTV, we record all the meetings. They are available to watch again and again and again and again, if you want to, if you're really that bored. 
Uh, they're also available on a video on demand. So if you go to the nctv.org website, you can look up, I think we got meetings going back to 2015. Um, you know, so you can see, you know, some of the other stuff. We're still trying to line up an agenda with the meeting. We have new equipment. But if you can't attend a meeting, you can always go back and rewatch it. Or the meetings are on uh, the YouTube page for the town also. So there's, you know, as exciting as it is to sit here with us, if you can't make it, you can always watch us online. Thank you. All right, I, bear with me for a second. I'm going to go through. I took lots of notes while you all were talking, and I'm going to try and make some sense out of my thoughts. But um, uh, in terms of the train station, because that seems to be the biggest um, issue, I think, that's coming forward right now. I wanted to, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Everybody on this um, council has a different opinion about the train station. Um, we are not united in one way or another on the train station. I can assure you of that. Um, I will tell you that the state of Connecticut is the one that's pushing the train station, not this council. So when I hear people coming forward tonight and saying that we're pushing this or we're planning this or we're doing this, um, my answer to you is that we are not. Um, Senator Lesser um, is our senator at the state level and he sent us, sent me uh, a letter back in May um, and I'm going to read it because I want to make sure that everybody understands how this communication happened. Okay. So back in May, I got this communication on a Tuesday, dear mayor, as you know, a Newington train station is listed on DOT's long-term capital plan. It is not currently on the immediate DOT priority list. However, having spoken to senior DOT leaders today, they indicated to me that it will return to the priority list if they receive a letter from you affirming that Newington supports a train station at the Cedar Street location. So I want to make it clear, the state is the, it, the um, I, there's no other way to say it. The state is the one that's telling us that they want the train station at the Cedar Street location. This council had discussed two different locations as a possibility, and it was discussed years ago. And that was either at Newington Junction or Cedar Street. And there were very differing opinions on it. Um, ultimately, probably about five or six years ago, the consensus of the council was to say yes to the state. It sounded like they were going to come through with money at the time. Um, there was no formal communication. There was no formal funding. There was no anything of the sort. Um, at that time, it was it had to be 15 or 16. I, I don't have that timeline with me. But there's been, re was it 18? 2018 is when we did the TOD. Regulations. Thank you. So that's my next. So there was the transit village district design district um, that was created um, and passed through TPZ. Um, when so when people talk about the Sousa property, um, there were chunks of property that were basically zoned as possible um, chunks to be used for the train station development. We never talked about imminent domain. We never talked about any of that. The state at the time said they would work with landowners and if they needed land, they would work on buying it. They would whatever. That was their plan. That's all the state. That's on them to determine what they do with that. Um, Senator Lesser's note continued and said, um, to the best of his knowledge, that reflected that um, the train station at Cedar Street reflects the will of the council on the TPZ. This let the letter that he was asking me to write is extremely time sensitive because a tranche of funding will be available as soon as the next bond commission meeting and decisions are being made right now. Please let me know as soon as possible if you are able to turn a letter around. So he wanted me to do it right then. So my response to him um, after consideration, I asked him if I could have a time frame um, because I wanted to. And this was my response. Can you give me a time frame so that I can reach out to the counselors? and make sure that we are doing our due diligence. Thank you for your work with Newington and making sure we're on the forefront. He responded with another letter that said I had till the end of the week, I had till Friday. This is a Tuesday night, wanting me to make a decision by Friday on whether I as mayor can commit to something that I don't have the right to commit to. I'm one of nine. So I don't make decisions like that without nine folks. Um, so what I sent back to him was a letter stating a, that I felt like there was a general feeling of um, wanting to know more about a train station in Newington, but there was no commitment to where that train station should be because the previous information we had gotten was that the funding would not be available for up to 10 years and that we couldn't commit to a site in our town 
based on thinking that that could be in 10 years. Cedar Street could look very different in 10 years. There might be nothing left on it, or it might be built up to the hilt and we don't have any room for a train station. I don't know what that's going to look like when funding becomes available. So I wasn't comfortable committing to a site or a location or anything for this council at that time. I told him there was a general support for a train station in the future if funding became available in 10 years. That was essentially our communication. Um, so what I would say to everyone here is, and, and this is where I get a little passionate and I try not to get defensive, but when I hear people saying that we're pushing something and that it's our plan, I feel like people are being misinformed. And that's my concern. I want you to have the right information as members of our public. So as Councilor Camillo said and Councilor Don, we're, we're available. Our information's on the website. Email us, ask us. If you get a flyer, if you hear something in the news, let me tell you, the news doesn't always run things that are accurate. That's just a fact. There are articles in the newspaper where one side of the story is reflected and not the other side. So I would urge you, if you have questions after you read something, hear something, email, call, reach out to us. Email is better for me, to be quite honest, because I work full time as a teacher during the day. I'm a speech therapist. So um, feel free to email me. I'm usually good at getting back within a few days. Um, but ask the questions because... I don't want people getting upset and feeling like there's an imminent threat to their property or their businesses or that we're discussing something at this table. Like the last time people were coming in before the meeting and um, it, the first couple that came in was an older couple who mobility appeared to be an issue for them and they were struggling. They came in, we helped them sit and they said to us, You're, we're here for that train station meeting. And, and I said, we're not having a train station meeting. I don't know what you mean. And they said, we were told we got a flyer. There's a train station meeting tonight. And I said, there's a town council meeting tonight, but the train station is not on our agenda. It's not even before us right now. The, the state hasn't committed to anything. They haven't asked us for anything since May. Since that request for an instant decision was asked, we haven't heard another word from the state, from the senator, from DOT. I've gotten no communication since then. So there is no imminent train station. I'm not saying it's not out there. And I'm not saying the state's not planning for it. They may be, but we're not right now. It's 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 a topic, but it's not something that's actually before us as a plan. And I and I I can just I will just keep saying that. Um, um, in terms of being notified, I wanted to make sure you understand. And um, our our clerk is going to put it up on the screen. There is a function on our website. So if you have uh, web connectivity and are able to get to our website, there is a way to sign up for notifications um, where you can request which, I think it's specific to which uh, commission or um, agendas you wanna be notified of. And then you can get a notification um, through email to letting you know our agendas are, are, so that you know to look if something's coming up. So there is a way, if you're interested in town planning and zoning, you can get that if you're interested in town council, you can get that. Whatever you're interested in, you can subscribe to notifications for those. Um, so if there are specific things you're interested in, there is a way to do that on the website. Create your password uh, and then well, I'll throw it in. Okay. I just want to make sure because that is a nice avenue for people to have. I know I had signed up at one time and it would just pop up in my calendar that there was a meeting coming up for a certain commissioner. You know, if I knew that they were going to be discussing something I was interested in, I would get that notification. And then I would it would make, spark me to at least look and say, is there anything on the agenda that I want to be there for? Um, so that is a good avenue to use. Um, I, I wrote on my paper, I circled it in big letters, state, state, state. A lot of what you're talking about, Fen Road, Cedar Street, they're both state roads. Do we have input? Sort of. Um, if the state wants our input, they'll ask for it, but that doesn't always happen. Sometimes they just make decisions and they notify us. So um, I, I would say, yes, bring your concerns to us, but make sure you're bringing them to the state also. So um, Senator Lesser's our state um, senator. I would make sure you're talking to him and letting his office know if you have concerns about things going on on those streets as well. The development pieces are ours because they go through TPZ. So if there's a, like the Dakota project that a lot of people are talking about, which is where the old Crest Pontiac used to be, that was, as others have already mentioned, was um, came through zoning, I think, five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, it ended up in court because there were issues with safety that we were concerned about. The town, not us, but the TPZ didn't um, feel it was appropriate. Ultimately, it was a private landowner and the project was allowed um, through the court proceedings. So I know you're seeing it now starting to be developed, but that was not, you know, 
that was not a quick decision. It was something that went through several meetings of TPZ, ended up in court. Like it, it was a long process. So I know if you're not notified of something, you might think it's quick, but these things are not quick. Um, and there is no issue that comes to this table with very rare exception um, that doesn't get that gets decided in one meeting. So you'll see we have new business and old business on our agenda. New business, we hear a presentation, it's out there, we don't vote on it, we wait till our next meeting. So everything is on our um, agendas for at least, if you think about it, it goes out the week before, the Both following week it comes up for new business, two weeks later we consider voting on it. So there's at least a three week span um, where it's kind of out there for people to know about it before it comes to a vote. So if you get those notifications and you take a peek at those agendas, <laughs> hopefully that will help. And if there's something you want us to know your opinion on, you'll be able to do that. Um, just doesn't like any passwords. All right, it's not working They're for him tonight. He's trying to log in under his login. Um, but no, there I, is that function. I was creating I've done one it. so they would see, but unfortunately every password I'm trying, it's not <laughs> working. But what okay. will happen is it'll come into a page and it'll allow you to go through and select every board and commission you have an interest in, whether it's planning or uh, notifications from the library that are coming out. So use the website. It's a benefit for you. All of the, anything that gets posted on our website that's part of that news blast or meetings or agendas or minutes all go out automatically to you in the text and email. It's all available. Okay, I'm going to stop there. That's enough. I just want to make sure because I'm hearing frustration from you all about knowing what's going on and feeling like we're pushing things. And from my perspective, we're not pushing things because we do have this process where we go for weeks. So if you feel like something's being pushed or you see it on the agenda, call, email, let us know or come here again and let us know when it's on the agenda. The train station is not on the agenda. We're not going to talk about it at all. It's just not before us for consideration. Um, as far as I know, there's no funding yet. There's no plan from the state. There's no indication from the state that they're looking at Newington specifically other than in a general plan. But there's considerations for many towns along the line. We're just one of them. But I have not had any, any communication with the state about it. So I want to be clear about that. I can't, I can't really ask. We don't dialogue at this point. I'm not allowed to by our rules. So um, if you have questions, shoot me an email or um, leave it with our clerk and then I can. I can I have, follow I have up. Who owns Alumni Road? There's a town road. Alumni Road is a town road. So the state wants to push the train station. They're gonna, if they will say they want to push it, they're going to push to buy that our town road. No, the Alumni Road and the train station are, are separate. Other, are separate. Yeah, I don't know how alumni alumni, as far as I know, doesn't fit into the train station piece. I, I really can't engage. I'm yeah. sorry, guys. This, that's not how our meetings work. It's not a. I can't. We have to get into our agenda. Um, okay. But I would ask you if you have questions, shoot me an email. It's my first initial last name, so B Del Buno at newingtonct.gov. Shoot me an email, and we we can chat or talk or email back and forth. Any of us? Okay. Any yeah. Of, yeah. Or also, our first initial last name. Also, the general. Town Council at NewingtonCT.gov as well. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on, counselors. I get it. I get it. The emails that people do send in, are you replying back to them? Because a lot of people say they email all, all of you and they don't get emails back to them. So again, I'm not, I don't want to address it. I'm not going to have a dialogue right now, but um, if I receive an email to my BW at NewingtonCT.gov, I answer it. I can't speak for everyone else. Yeah. There is a general mailbox that may get answered by staff. I don't know about that, but if it comes to me, I will answer it. It seems to me that we are slaves by the state. We are slaves by the state. Let's go municipalize DOT. All the votes in Lincoln belong to it by the vote. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. We have to get onto our agenda. Thank you all for coming. All right, next item on our agenda this evening is the presentation by the Central Connecticut Health District regarding vaccination clinics and other updates. And I'm sorry, I'm just flip, flipping through my screens. Uh, Charles Brown is here from the Connecticut Health District. Welcome, Charles. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, it's been a while. I'd like to say that I enjoyed the time off from coming to the town councils to talk about it. <laughs> uh, uh, there is entirely too much of that at the peak. Um, unfortunately, I, I do have to say, um, you know, COVID is still an issue. I know we all want to kind of put it to bed and not worry about it anymore. Um, but what we're seeing in the numbers um, this year overall, the levels of COVID in the community really 
uh, are a little bit higher than what we've seen in the past couple of years for the past few months. Um, so, and that's saying a lot because the, the actual reporting cases that we see uh, doesn't give us the whole picture now that there's uh, the ability to test at home much more uh, mm -hmm. easily. And those test at home kits, while they're great, uh, really don't get reported. So as a public health director, when I see numbers that are up, knowing that there's a lot of cases that aren't reported, uh, it does kind of make sure to, you know, get my antenna up there a little bit. So I just want to make sure that people are doing the right things that they always have done. As I've said, said before, um, you know, the wash your hands, cover your cough, stay home if you're sick and definitely get vaccinated. Uh, so if you have not been vaccinated, uh, please do so. Uh, if you are vaccinated, thank you. Thank you a thousand times. Thank you. Uh, but we also want you to get boosted. Uh, especially with this new booster that is a bivalent vaccine. Um, that means that it has two different types of, um, of virus. Um, so it addresses the original Wuhan strain and the, uh, the most recent Omicron strain uh, that's actually in, um, that's actually in, in the one shot. So it's, you get a twofer of protection with this latest booster. Um, so we encourage anybody that has the opportunity to do so, please get your, your vaccine booster. Uh, other vaccines and considerations, and uh, I know that was up on the uh, screen, uh, we have our October vaccination clinics for influenza. Uh, we've been lucky, and I thank everybody for doing the right things like wearing a mask and all that. It's really kept down the numbers of all respiratory diseases. What we see right now, though, is a very bad year in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, specifically Australia, for their seasonal influenza. Uh, and what we're anticipating is that there's going to be a pretty bad flu year. Um, influenza takes the lives of about anywhere from between 36 to 54,000 Americans a year uh, in a typical year, that not, not in the last couple, but in a typical season. Uh, so we don't want to have that happen. Our folks, we have our vaccination clinics that are going to start up here in October uh, in Newington. Uh, they're going to be late at the back end of October. So the 24th and 25th um, is when we're actually looking at those. Uh, we are doing uh, appointment basis. And the reason for that is to make sure that we don't get people overcrowded. We want to make sure that we have enough space uh, to efficiently address everybody, make sure that we're not, you know, adding more problems uh, by, by bringing people together. Um, so I encourage everybody, come to our website. Vaccination appointments are open at this point right now. You don't have to just go to Newington. You can go to any of our clinics, uh, sign up for it. Uh, we do have two drive-through clinics as well uh, in Berlin and in uh, Rocky Hill, I believe. Um, so, you know, take advantage of those uh, also. Um, wanted to give a plug also for our family clinic that we have. Uh, we actually set this up to specifically address the younger population, um, have families come in. Um, our nurses are really great uh, to be able to address those uh, and really take a good time of care uh, so that the kids and families can get their shots in a very calm uh, environment. Uh, I believe uh, folks from the council have taken advantage of that uh, when we do that over at Newington High School. Um, so other than that, uh, just wanted to say thank you. Uh, thank you a thousand times. Thank you for the support uh, that we have. Um, so from the towns, we've definitely uh, feel that, you know, every day uh, we're starting to raise our heads uh, from COVID itself what the future of the health of our communities looks like. So we've distributed um, a community health perception survey, and I'll make sure that James uh, gets uh, the address. It was in our QR code, uh, but I'll make sure he gets an address to put up on the website. We've got it open until September 26th. 
and we'd really like to get a lot of Newington representation out there. Uh, right now, Berlin, I think, has 70% of the survey, and we've got about 700 uh, replies. Uh, Newington right now has about 45, so we definitely need to hear from your residents uh, as to what they feel you know, is important for us as a health district to address. Uh, so for those that have, have the information on the survey, I ask that you share it within your networks. Uh, it takes about 10 minutes to complete the survey and it's gonna give us a wealth of information to be able to address uh, the needs of, of health for all four of our communities. And with that, I'll stand to answer any questions. Okay, counselors, do we have any questions? Councilor Rada. Yes, um, Charles, uh, just a quick question. Um, one of the things that I do is COVID vaccination and people have been asking me, um, I, well, they've said, okay, I, I received my initial vac vaccination uh, for COVID. I got my first booster. Should I get the second booster, which would have, which would be the monovalent, or should I wait and just get, have my second booster be the bivalent? Really, you can't go wrong with either one. Um, you know, it at this point because the second booster is out there of the bivalent. Um, my my thoughts would be just to get the bivalent. Um, yeah. You know, you can get the booster, wait a few weeks, and then get another booster. Uh, but I don't think that would be as efficient as just getting the bivalent vaccine. That, that's been my suggestion. So thanks for backing me up on that. <laughs> I Got appreciate it. And and we, I think we, we're, our organization is going to be getting the bivalent this week. So we'll have it available for, for folks. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're currently, we're not, uh, don't have plans at this point, uh, CCHD, uh, to pick up and do the COVID vaccinations. Uh, we want to see if, if there's enough folks out there giving uh, the vaccine. If there's not, or if there's a particular population that needs it, uh, then we'll step into that. Uh, right now, our focus is really on flu um, to make sure that we get enough uh, of our um, residents vaccinated for flu this year. Um, I'm very concerned, as I said, with the numbers that we see down in the Southern Hemisphere. You add that just to the number of cases of COVID and it can easily overwhelm a healthcare system, just even if both of them are moderate um, impacts. So, you know, definitely if you're not vaccinated, get vaccinated this year. It's gonna help everybody out. Tim? Hey, just a quick question. When, when should people get the flu vaccination? I, I've heard people say not too early, not too late. What, what's the, the general timeline? Uh, generally, I mean, what we look at is to be um, vaccinated so that you have full immunity by the time when around the holidays where we typically see the peak of the season. So <laughs> we're looking at, that's why we always plan for our October clinics. Right, because it gives you the opportunity for your for your body to get that fully immunized uh, response uh, prior to the holidays in November uh, and getting into that peak season into January. Uh, so it'll give you the best protection in November, December, and January, uh, and then it starts to wane a little bit towards the end of of the of the winter. But the vaccines that that we offer are quadrivalent vaccines. That means they actually, for flu, they address the four most likely uh, flu uh, viruses that are going to be out there. Uh, so if you get a, get the shot, you're actually getting protected against four different uh, variants of the influenza. Um, this year, we also have uh, something that we have not done in the past, and that's uh, have about 300 doses of high dose uh, vaccine uh, for the seniors. Uh, we got that, and those are going to be on a first-come, first-served basis. So if you're looking for a high-dose vaccination, uh, you can actually register and, and get an appointment for that th through our website. Uh, if you can't um, do the computer, you know, as far as that's concerned, uh, we do have a phone number uh, on the flyer to be able to call in, leave a message. Our folks will actually call you back and they will register you via, via the um, computer just over the phone. Uh, 
Um, we went, we did a lot of that last year with COVID. It worked very well. So we're, we took that on uh, to be able to get folks registered uh, for influenza as well this year. Thank you. You're welcome. Councilor Nagel. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you also for all the work you uh, have been doing and consistently uh, been doing and also uh, telling people to be vigilant, even though uh, uh, we don't have the restrictions in terms of wearing masks, whatever that we once had. Um, I, I know from personal experience that you can have uh, be as careful as possible and you can have uh, be up to date as, as uh, much as you can and, and you still come down with uh, with COVID and thank you for your, your concern and having one of your staff call back while I was recuperating. Um, so it, it, it is still something that's ongoing. Uh, so, so this is just a personal uh, telling people that this isn't something just someone on high is saying that you, you need to, you need to be careful in terms of, uh, uh, I had to step out of the, the room for a moment. So maybe you answer this question. Uh, there ha has been a rumor or uh, conversations about uh, there being a combination vaccine that will uh, handle uh, both uh, the flu this season and also COVID. Uh, can you give me any information about that or is that a purely speculation yeah, I, or nothing else? I think it was speculation. I know that there were some uh, companies that were looking to uh, do that. And I, I think that that may be something that we see in the future. Uh, but, you know, right now it's, it's not out there as an approved vaccine. Um, what I will say is uh, CDC says that you can get both vaccines at the same time and it's not going to, they have not seen really adverse effects other than sore arms. Um, so, you know, if you want to get both vaccines in the same day, you can do that if it's provided. Uh, our clinics, we're not going to mix and match. Uh, we're going to do influenza, and if we do COVID, we're going to do COVID. Um, so that's kind of where that stands right now, Dave. Okay, you answered uh, my my uh, next question about taking, uh, can you take influenza and the other at the same time, or you, you had to wait uh, to some extent. Um, um, I had one other question, it seems to have just gone by, but uh, once again, thank you for all you're doing. And if I think of it before we're done, I'll raise my hand again. All right. What happens does anyone else? Charles, thank you so much for coming and giving us the update for your continued work on uh, not only keeping us informed, but helping all four communities with the health district. We really appreciate everything. You're very welcome. And I do want to uh, give a shout out to our staff that actually helped produce that number. We actually have new staff on, on our team uh, that produce this. We actually have an epidemiologist uh, on our staff now part-time, getting ready to become full-time. So a lot of numbers and disease uh, reporting, hopefully in the future is gonna, is gonna be uh, much better to provide that information uh, you know, from, from our staff to you. Okay, great. Um, Councilor Nagel just raised his hand. He must have thought of it. It's more of a comment <laughs> as opposed to a question. I wanna okay. agree with you about the home uh, uh, tests that they are not always reliable. Uh, having gone through that process, taken two of them, thinking I had another problem, and then eventually I uh, went to a walk-in clinic and had a different kind of more comprehensive test to find out that it was COVID. So uh, I, I'd agree with you that uh, uh, that people uh, should not just rely on simply because they have a pro a, a health problem; they don't quite know what it is to rely just on the home test because. Uh, uh, they're not as totally reliable as uh, going to a walk-in clinic or your doctor and getting something more comprehensive. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Charles. You're welcome. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thanks a lot. All right, folks, we're on to consideration of old business. Uh, this evening we have before us uh, for consideration of action, the discussion, um, of the explanatory text for draft charter referendum. And James, I'm gonna turn it straight over to you so I don't misspeak on this one. This is way too important. Certainly. So over the, over the past couple of months, while we've been discussing the variations of the draft report and the final report that the council accepted on August 23rd, conversation has sort of drifted into the, do we want to inform public? How do we want to inform public? And are we going to send them anything? So if we are going to send them anything, the council would need to authorize that in order for us to expend funds. 
So the motion that we do have available is statutory. There are two specific pieces that you would approve with it. One is the creation of explanatory text, and one is the creation of additional information. So additional information could be the posters that go into the polls, anything of that type. The specific explanatory text would actually be mailed out to an absentee voter. Ballots. It could be a small flyer that we decide to mail out to each home. So that is a decision the council does have to make and authorize me to create. So what we can use is we can utilize a draft report that was put together and we can utilize that in, uh, we can't advocate for it one way or another, but we can use the information that was supplied to you for the reasonings for those changes. And that can be put together into a small flyer. The state actually just sent theirs in for um, the uh, early voting question. That'll be question one. Our question two is uh, already placed in the state for our ballot as well. Okay. And I know, counselors, we have talked about this a few times in terms of what we want to do to make sure that the public is really well informed. Um, so, uh, you know, we've talked before about the idea of sending something out to every household. While it's expensive, this is essentially the constitution of our town, right? Our charter is our constitution, so to speak. So um, in terms of cost-saving measures, we don't want to send out something cumbersome, but perhaps I would I would suggest for consideration a postcard um, that would notify every resident of the um, charter revision, the question that's coming, and ways that they can access the complete document for review. So if they want to request one from the town clerk, they can request one. If they're not able to come in, they can pick one up. Um, they would be able to get it on the website. Like I'm envisioning every possible way to have the information available um, for those that want to access it prior to the November vote. Um, so I'm just thinking of a postcard being the least expensive way to do it, but making sure we have a number of options for folks. Councilor Page. I agree, Mayor. Could we, maybe we're going to do this already. Can we put a QR code on that? Just so you can we can create a QR code to come directly onto the website. That's not a problem at all. I mean, I would agree yeah. from a cost effective standpoint and for all the reasons you've just said that that seems like it makes sense rather than send an entire packet to everybody. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, we, we wouldn't send something, something out huge. Um, but understand between now and the 23rd, when you last approved, I will be advertising the entire charter in the paper. So that will be in there and available for the public. The part that they won't have is what was the discussion that got to that point? Mm -hmm. And that's where that additional informational postcard or QR code or any information that we can give them through NCTV, through our website, through any of our meetings, that's when they're going to be able to pull the data, take a look, see what the commission proposed, see what the council accepted to be able to make that informed decision when we get to November. Well, you just answered my question that I had was putting it out, get, get putting the, the full final or the full draft out in the newspaper. That's required under statute. And we had talked about like which newspaper would make the most sense. People have to subscribe or pay for the Harper Current, but the River Minder goes to every home no matter what. Mm -hmm. Correct. So that would be one way to get it out there just as a thought. But it goes to one else. It goes to, yeah. 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 Uh, Councilor Mankey? Yeah, I would agree with the postcard. And then, and then if people want more information, give them sources to get that information. I think it's it's cost effective, but it also informs the voters. And those that, are, that are, would would want that information can get it. And those that don't want it, we aren't, we aren't wasting money sending it. That it's not going to be used. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm thinking of, I mean, we certainly have residents that don't have access to internet or may not be able to physically get to town hall. So this would allow them a way there'd be a phone number there'd be a way for them to call and request one be mailed right. if we need to do that right. we will but um but at least it would offer a number of options so what do you need from us this evening james the resolution that that's in our packet <laughs> all right simply the authorization on both uh, the sections of the statute will manage it uh, the question as i said before has already been supplied to secretary of state's office and verified so we are set for november Okay, who would like to go ahead and read that motion in Councilor Donahue? Be resolved. The town council hereby authorizes the preparation and printing by the town clerk subject to the review and approval of the town attorney of the explanatory text for the question approved on August 23rd, 2022 for submission to the voters at referendum on November 8th, 2022, specifying the intent and purpose of the charter revisions 
in accordance with section 9-369B of the Connecticut General Statute. Be it further resolved, the subject to approve that one. That the subject to be to the, to the approval of the town attorney, the town council further authorizes the preparation and printing of materials concerning the question approved hereby for the submission to the voters of the referendum, in addition to the explanatory text in accordance with section 9-369B of the Connecticut General Statute. Second. Seconded by Councilor Rada. Any further discussion, Councilors? All right, hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes okay. unanimously with Deputy Mayor Pedraco absent. Luckily on vacation for her. <laughs> all right, next item this evening. We move into refunds, the approval for September 13th, 2022. Councilor Nagel, if you would. Uh, resolved that property tax refunds in the amount of $4,261.08 are hereby approved in the individual amounts and for those named on the request for refund of an overpayment of taxes certified by the revenue collector, mm -hmm. a list of which is attached to this resolution. A second. Second. My Councilor Donahue, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Deputy Mayor Bedraco asks. Next item is the approval of the minutes of August 23rd, 2022, our regular meeting. Councilor Nagel? I flipped them over and I believe that they are appropriate. Can you make a motion to accept those? I make a motion that we approve the August 23rd. I'm sorry to think. Oh, yes, yeah. the August 23rd uh, minutes. They just flipped the screen for a second. Second. <laughs> the date. But second. Second to my Councillor Mankey. Any discussion, Councillors? We all just rely on Councillor Nagel. He gave a stamp of approval. So, uh -huh. all right. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item this evening is under new business, the tax assessment fixing agreement at 690 Cedar Street. Um, I'm gonna have our town manager, Mr. Chapman start off. And then I know we have um, Steve Kosofsky with us and Fauna from our assessor's office. So Mr. Chapman, do you wanna get us started? Yes, uh, I'd be glad to. This has been a long time coming. Uh, I will say that this project uh, that we're gonna be reviewing tonight for the tax fixing agreement started about two and a half years ago. There was contact made to Steve's office as the town assessor by the developer and he was actually looking at a different piece of property, but uh, we concluded that was not the property for him. Steve suggested looking at 690 Cedar Street, which is the property that we own, the old national welding site. And, um, it's about a four acre site that has sat empty for, I guess, 20 years or more. No tax uh, revenue whatsoever has been coming in. So we were very excited to have Anthony Properties uh, over the last two and a half years work with the town. And we're the, at the point now where a tax fixing agreement is being sought by the developer. Uh, and the schedule would be that if you approve the, the agreement, the next move would be for uh, acquisition by Anthony Properties for the property to be bought from the town. This is a major um, achievement. And I can tell you in the three years that I've been back here, I have not had one, uh, we'll say, inquiry into anyone else wanting to buy that property. So I think it was perfect timing, perfect fit. And I give Steve a lot of credit for um, putting it all together. And uh, Steve and Fauna are here tonight to go over the agreement itself with you. And then hopefully you can take an action in two weeks or the next meeting to approve it. So Steve, I'm gonna turn it over to you. This is, this is great because Steve is no longer with us, but he agreed to stay on as a consultant. And this would be one of the things that I wanna see he and I achieve as a team because it started with us and hopefully it'll be 
you know, coming to an end before the end of this year. So Steve, it's all yours. You're muted. Oh, I can't see him on my screen. He's not speaking yet. There you go. I apologize. Good evening. Um, as Keith said, this development actually started. Uh, it was very memorable in my in my mind. It was a Friday afternoon, and I got a call from a representative from Anthony Properties that was scouring town of Newington looking for a site to develop, and he had actually looked at a site across the street which I didn't think met his, his goals of what he had in mind. So as I did answer all of his questions, I then directed him across the street to the former National Wilding site, which <clears throat> I think Keith was very, very uh, conservative. I think it's been closer to 40 years since <laughs> we received any tax revenue on this piece. For those of you that have been in this town that this long, it was a former manufacturing facility that uh, ran into some fiscal problems. Um, they stopped paying their taxes. The town ended up foreclosing on the property. And since that time, it just sat there in a state of contamination. Um, several years ago, the town got aggressive with the state of Connecticut and the state did provide some funding to begin remediation. And this was all laid out to this developer just to be completely transparent. I didn't want him to, to get blindsided. And it did not scare him away. He, he liked what he saw. He liked the town of Newington, the location, um, and the, the makeup of the community uh, adjacent to Central Connecticut State University. Um, our neighbors, West Hartford, Avon, Farmington. He just thought that this was an ideal site for the type of development that he was doing. Um, the fact that they built the Connecticut Fast Track, whether people think it was a success or not, he was very excited about that as well as access to his future development right into downtown Hartford. So it, it really was a, a perfect storm at the, at the right time. And we've been working with him for, as Keith said, about two and a half years. The remediation is just about finished. I believe we're about 90, 95% finished. And we've reached the point now where we were discussing a potential tax fixing agreement. And at this point, um, I'm gonna let Fauna explain the details. Um, she was good enough to pick up the ball and put the details of our general type of agreement together with the developer. And um, we're pretty excited to show <laughs> hypothetically what this development could mean financially for the town. And I say hypothetically, the assumptions that are gonna be shown in what Fauna is going to show are truly for illustration purposes only. There are a lot of assumptions that obviously we can't project this far in the future but it just will give you some idea of the financial impact that a development of this size um, is going to mean for the town. Yep. Hi, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, hopefully you can all hear me. Um, so typically for these developments, um, we've done a flat 45%. Um, this one we're proposing a, um, a graduated uh, I don't know how you say the of the abatement, um, where we will starting with an 80%, but graduate down to a 15. Um, that's mostly to help the developer with the initial upfront costs. As you know, construction is getting more expensive as time goes on. Uh, we work together with Anthony Properties to come up with this method of doing it, but the overall, the overall percentage that they're getting off is still 45. Um, I think that's about it. That is different from what you usually see. Do you have any other questions? Before we take questions, Fawn, I yep. will just, I'll just yep. indicate the reason why we came up with a 45 yep. was it's all based upon the investment that a developer is willing to 
to invest in the mm -hmm. town of Newington. Yeah. Um, the high water line, if you will, is a development going on at 3333 Berlin Turnpike where that developer is investing close to $100 million. As a result of that, we brought forth and you approved a similar agreement like this, which averaged out to a 50% tax abatement over a 10 year period. Mm -hmm. This developer is projecting at this point, although it's still not finalized, um, an investment of about $70.5 million. Um, I say it's not finalized. He still is trying to get some final numbers. And because of the economic situation, um, those costs could actually increase. So that's why I said that these projections are simply an illustration um, of what could possibly the town could uh, expect with a $70 million investment for a facility like this. If I okay. may, uh, if I may, uh, um, James, could you put up the, uh, the drawings of the uh, structures itself? Okay, that's looking straight down. Myra Cohen Way is up to the north, Cedar Street to the south, and the fast track borders on the east side. And uh, what you see is the white area is, will be where, where apartments are located. And there's anticipated to be 240 some odd apartments. Most of them will be studios or one bedroom. Um, the gray area, the rectangle, that is a parking garage where all of residents will have parking on the level that they live on. Uh, this will be a three or four story building. There'll be a swimming pool in the center court, as well as other activities in other parts of the building. There'll be a uh, area for those that want to work remotely, rather than taking the busway to Hartford on a certain day, that they will be able to do all their business within the uh, remote uh, commu uh, computer center area. Um, it's probably every every apartment other than a few uh, on the internal uh, apartment will, every apartment will have a deck off of their sliders off their living room. Um, it will be probably the classiest apartment complex in in the certainly the Newington greater heart, greater area. Uh, and the fact that it's adjacent to the Central Connecticut State University and close to Route Nine and near the busway all make this an ideal location for what is being proposed to be built. You can actually live in this apartment complex with the shopping, uh, you know, right up the street, walking distance. You don't even need to use the garage if you didn't want to. You don't even need a car. Uh, if you want to take a train right now, you'd get on the bus go to Hartford, get on the train. If you want to uh, go, uh, you know, to stop and shop, just take a walk. Uh, you want to go to Starbucks, which everybody seems to want to go to these days. I recall one way, a couple of feet. So it's really an ideal location for what is being proposed to be built. And it's going to be a high luxury, uh, high class apartment complex that um, I think uh, it was perfect for the location. And as Steve points out, uh, we're at about a $70 million investment right now. When we started the discussions, I believe we were at 63 or 4 million. So what's happened since we started this, the discussion has uh, inflation has kicked in and um, the price is now at about $70 million. So um, we're optimistic that this would be a real bonus to the town, even though tonight you heard a lot of complaints about traffic. And as I said, you know, you have the busway right there. If somebody's going to Hartford, I don't think they're going to take their car down, take it out of the garage and drive to Hartford when they can just jump on a bus and go. Keith, uh, I think so, it's also worth mentioning that you, you mentioned it, but I think we need to emphasize this facility is extremely upscale. Um, I know, I mean, there's, there's a, a, a beginning of a rendering, but the rents that I believe they were in, they were talking about, and Fauna, you can jump in if in fact I'm off base, but I mean, I, I think that they were talking in the neighborhood of 2,500 and up 
yeah. in terms yeah. of the, the type of individuals that they're going to be trying to attract. Now, with that said, this company has also agreed and the state of Connecticut, who still has an interest because of the funding that they gave us for the remediation, has approved will be providing, I believe, between 12 and 15 of these apartments as affordable units. Right. So even though it is an extremely um, exclusively high rent um, facility, um, there is still gonna be an affordable comp uh, component to this. Now what you're looking at on this view is basically from uh, the fast track. Um, that's that would be what you would see if you were waiting for the bus to go into Hartford. Uh, I believe there's some other uh, views, James. Yeah, this one would be the view from where the new hotel is being built next door. Yep. Um, so that's what they would see in the people living on this side. Uh, no, uh, excuse me, that, no, that's, oh, that's, that's looking towards stop and shop and so forth. Yeah, so yeah, um, so, um, so yeah, that would be the far north view that this James just had up. And this, yeah, so that's the, the north view, the previous, okay, this, this drawing is the view from Cedar Street. Um, yes. Keith, just for the, just so I wanna make sure the public understands, we're not approving this project. We're just looking at the tax abatement. This project has already been for months through TPZ, correct? That's correct. Everything is approved. We're waiting for one final sign off on the state uh, requirement that is in the process of being done. Once that is done, then the closing will be scheduled and we're looking probably between Thanksgiving and Christmas for the closing of the property. So just so counselors understand, I mean, they're kind of selling the project to us, so to speak, but the project's already been approved through TPZ. Yeah. Our purpose is strictly for the tax abatement piece, um, yes. which when I when I think about this property, as Steve mentioned, it's been probably close to 40 years that nothing was collected because the person had kind of defaulted on taxes and the business had closed and the town ended up, this is a very unique piece of property because in all the years I've been around, which have been a few, um, this is the only one I can think of that we actually kind of took ownership of. And then it's been sitting for so long. Um, and the remediation piece made it very unique too. And having to um, work over several years to get that taken care of um, with some support from the state. But when I look at this grid, and I know you were mentioning the 45% um, making sense based on the overall investment um, in the community, the 70.5 million uh, uh, anticipated cost right now. And when I look at the grid, I notice the mill rate is the same each year. And I know that's just a projection for our sake to look at based on the mill rate right now, um, that those would be the projected uh, costs or rather taxes that we could um, collect. So we're going, we would be going from zero dollars collected for 40 something years. <clears throat> Um, to uh, the first year in 2024, getting 300 and th almost $304,000 in the tax rolls. And that's with an 80% abatement. And then after 10 years, you're looking at 1.5 million if the mill rate stayed at what it is today. Um, so given that this property has been vacant for so long, quite honestly was an eyesore for so long with that abandoned factory. Mm -hmm. and, and we got, it's been several years now of, first getting the building taken down and then getting the remediation done and now having someone interested in purchasing and developing um, to get this uh, property developed and, and honestly, in a, such a beautiful way. The, the, the renderings I have seen have been um, pretty amazing. Um, the one thing I wanted to mention for the community too, to think of the affordable housing piece. Um, I know that topic came up earlier during public participation, but we are required by the state to have 10% of our housing in Connecticut um, earmarked as affordable. We have not met that 10% criteria yet. So every time there's a project that comes in, if the state has to work with us on it at all, like with this um, property, the state had to give a, I think it was a right of way, Keith, correct me if I'm wrong. Some, they had to work with us on it because it was on that street. But from what I had heard through TPZ, um, so the state put that caveat in that we had to include the, not we, the developer, 
um, who is purchasing that property and developing um, had to include a certain number of affordable units. And so that's why that Dakota property um, up the street was a big, there was a big push years ago because they kept saying to us, this, you know, when I went through court, well, you haven't met your 10% yet in Newington. So, you know, there is a push to continue that effort to get to that 10%. So, um, so I just want to mention that. And it, I, I don't know, those people that get those apartments at the affordable rate are going to be pretty lucky. It sounds like if they're as, as nice as they sound, but um, based on what I'm seeing on these figures and the history of this property, I think this um, fixing tax fixing agreement makes sense. Um, the project's already passed through. So um, I think this makes sense. I know we're not looking to take action tonight. This will move as always to our next agenda in two weeks so that we um, have time to consider the information presented and the community would have an opportunity to weigh in as well. Um, Councilor Page? Oh, yep, go ahead, Keith. Uh, Mayor, I just gonna, it's important that you look at the very bottom line after 20 years, the, the town will be collecting about $23 million in revenue. That oh, revenue. I had missed that, thank you. Yep, way down now, here. Now for the last 20 years, that property has generated no income. The other thing I would point out that the mill rate is set at uh, the current mill rate and it should be the council's objective that that mill rate remain for the next 20 years, just as it's read. Uh, we have to live within our means. And uh, you know, as the revenue goes up on all of the projects that are underway now, that should be the only available increases in spending on the expenditure side of the budget. If you don't do that, then your mill rate's going to continue to climb as it was for the last, you know, we'll say 18 years before three years ago. Mm -hmm. Last three years, your mill rate has actually gone down. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Page? Thanks, Mayor. Just a couple of questions. What is that property worth right now, Mr. Chapman or, as it, or Ms. As Eller? It sits, as it sits currently, uh, on a good day, if somebody came in, and wanted to buy it. There still is contamination on it. We have some monies reserved um, that have been in place now for years. Uh, some uh, state money on the grant and some town money that was set aside. But you're probably looking at a good day to sell four acres of contaminated property in that location, a uh, million dollars, I would guess. Uh, would you agree, Steve or, or Fauna? Fauna? Funny, you're, funny, you're muted. muted. Yes, the, the contamination, I believe, uh, I can't remember the exact cost, but it's 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 a decent it's a decent amount of money, and any buyer is going to have to deal with that. So if you have so choice least, between, uh, yep. So I think, least, uh, yep. Okay, there's at least another five hundred thousand yep. dollars worth of work to be done on cleaning up the site. Yeah, and then so I think um, Keith's do we have a third party that? Um, an objective third party that actually values appraises that land for this transaction. The the, the price that we're we're selling the land for was established uh, by Steve, and I believe Steve, you you contacted other uh, assessors, correct? Or um, already passed through the council, though, right? I did do some due diligence on it. Um, in answer to Councilman Page's question, we ought to direct his attention to the facility right across the street, 697 Cedar Street. That property is presently contaminated with a building on it that was in very poor shape. And right before I left, it sold for, I believe 700,000, I think is the last purchase price on that corner. Yeah, I think it's around 700, yeah. And it's still contaminated. So and I'm not saying, and I don't know anything about appraising property, so I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I just, if we're going to approve this, I would just like to see a document from a, a licensed or certified appraiser saying this is what it's worth. That's that's all I'm saying. That the property's worth? Because we're not approving the sale at this point. That's already been approved. So that's gone through. That's been signed. Yeah, that in. was, the, the sale already came through the council. We're just waiting for the closing now. Correct. Right. We authorized that, I want to say, last September or October, authorizing Mr. Chapman to execute the sale agreement. Okay, and that was done without an appraisal, just 
Uh, I want to say that there was something that was done and presented to the council yeah, at that I point. So I'd have too. to verify. I'd have to go folders. back and check the record. But and there, then, there was something. Okay. And then can we take a look, and it may be proprietary, so it might need to be done in private with the council and you, Mr. Chapman, or your staff, but at all the financials that you've gone over to justify the requested tax abatement? You mean Anthony Properties financials? Yeah, because clearly they, they've presented detailed financials to justify requesting an abatement, right? Yeah. So yeah. Without it, this deal isn't doable for them. If for some reason they fail to perform, the tax abatement goes away. No, what I'm saying is in order to ask for a break on taxes, I'm sure they would have had to present to you and your staff uh, detailed financials justifying their request, right? No, no, the no, the the standard operating procedure in Connecticut for developers now are uh, when they're investing upwards of seventy million dollars, they're expecting to have tax fixing agreements in place. Otherwise, they'll go to the next town over and get it. So we're in competition with all the other towns. So um, this is not anything unusual. This is standard operating procedure. And as I probably have said, with the 3333 development, because that gener generates or it's proposed to generate retail income or greater revenues there, I don't know that I'm comfortable with, with a residential only asking for a tax abatement. Um, and it may or may not be the practice in other towns, but this is um, not only is it a fantastic town, but it's a great location, which obviously the developer recognizes. And I don't think we should just consider that he's doing us an amazing favor by developing his property here without justifying it with his financials. Well, I, I would say that the developer probably, uh, hearing what you're saying right now, if the council were ever to go along with that, he'd probably pull out. Well, and just to go back to um, what Councilor Page said, the uh, 3333 property, we approved a tax abatement, but we approved two we separate did. ones. One was for the residential and one was for the retail, correct? It was yep. two separate developers. Yep. So we did approve a residential only one already on that property. Okay. Well, I'm just saying, I, I don't know anybody who does business for millions and millions of dollars without looking at detailed financials, just because quote unquote, everybody's doing it. I, I don't, I don't know that any businessman does, does a transaction that way. So I'm concerned. Councilor Mankey. Yeah. So <clears throat> I've been in the council for a number of years and we've, we've had <clears throat> uh, many people have looked at this site, but no one's actually wanted to develop this site. So I guess if we, I guess it comes down to if we don't give the tax abatement and they decide to move someplace else, we have then a big hole in the ground for four acres on, mm -hmm. on, on Cedar Street. Um, I think this is, as, as we've said, it's been said that this is standard procedure. If developers want to come in, they, they want something, they want the town to have some skin in the game too, if they're going to develop, you know, invest $70 million into it. They want us to have uh, some kind of a tax abatement. So I, I would be in favor of this. I, I, I don't need to see the financials because um, everybody's doing this. If, if we don't, if we don't do this, they'll, they'll move to another town and that'll do the same thing. And then to give, give an abatement and then we'll end up with this big hole in the ground. Steve, can you clarify for me in terms of the financials piece that Councilor Page is alluding to? Um, I remember in the past that I don't, it wasn't, I don't even think if, I can't remember if you were there, Steve, it was a property up on Cedar Mountain um, when they came in. And that was the first time I remember having an abatement come forward. Um, and actually, I think it was handled in executive session initially. Um, but they presented basically their development plan, which included kind of their financing in terms of this is how much they were expending on the property, the construction, and what was anticipated. That had to have been presented already to TPZ, correct? I don't know if it was presented to TPZ, but just to refresh people's memory, as Keith said, this developer made contact with me approximately three years ago. Right. My initial discussions with him, at that time, he proposed to spend $46 million on his facility. Mm -hmm. Three years later, he's now up to $70.5 million. You are correct, um, Mayor. Um, when I first got to Newington back in 2016, there was the development that was scheduled for the top of Cedar Mountain that was something similar to this in terms of an investment. I believe that investment was approximately the same amount, 70 million. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, 
it went it, fell through. it went belly up because right. they just could not get the financing. But in terms right. of financials, it was basically a review of the costs. They broke down all of the costs that it was going to it was going to cost the developer to construct. <laughs> but when they broke that down, did they break down their proposed revenues for the next twenty years? Uh, in twenty years, no. Because if they, I mean, your point is good about cost, but they're expending that money so they can make money, which is great. That's a good thing. Um, I hope they make a lot of money, but I, that would be, I think, a more thorough and responsible uh, fiduciary action on our part, which is to look at, the, again, the justification. I, I can't accept just because everybody's doing it. We should just give them a tax break. Well, I, I don't two, think that's the way we should do business. There's two points I can make for that. I mean, frankly, yes, it is absolutely your choice as the council, the governing body of this community to approve this. If in fact you don't, I agree with Keith, this developer will walk and will go from a potential of $23 million over 20 years back to zero. Number two on this, and Fauna, maybe, um, maybe you wanna jump in on this. Um, we have shown you this illustration and I can't reiterate this more. Keith indicated that the mill rate shown is static for 20 years. In reality, I think we all would like that. It's not gonna happen. The point also needs to be made that this was illustrated based upon an original cost of $70 million. Because of the type of facility that this is, the assessor going forward at the next revaluation will actually be valuing this property based upon the income stream that is generated, which based on my experience of 40 years is gonna generate significantly more revenue than what we're showing here. I agree, Steve. I just, I, you know, somebody once said trust, but verify. I'd like to trust them. And I'd like to also trust them on their promise for affordable housing, but I'd like it verified in writing. That's all I'm saying. We're being asked to make a multi-million dollar decision and, and we're doing it based on everybody saying it's a great deal and it'll be wonderful. And I've never bought anything just on everybody saying it'll be wonderful. I like to look at the details. The devil's in the details. I just wonder why, um, Councillor Page, you're asking these questions of this particular development versus the others that we've and you have already I, I voted uh, considered. The property for the same reason. And I voted for the 3333 because it was linked. Well, first of all, you didn't vote on a property, the, you voted on a development. I voted on you the voted no on the, on the for the development, but not for that person that you just mentioned because that was on Payne Road. Is it it is on Payne Road, correct? So that's what I'm referring to. I don't know who you're referring to. You said the Payne property. I didn't know what right. you were referring to, but Road. it wasn't the Payne property. Right. It was a development. I voted against it, is my point, mm -hmm. for the same reason. And as I've been only on this council for eight or ten months, I'm learning questions to ask. And and 3333 was, I thought, a better deal for our taxpayers because there's revenue being generated from retail retail business. I think that's a good thing. I don't know that this is at all justified to do this for residential only. That's all I'm saying. And I'm learning. I'm, I'm in a steep learning curve here. And I'm learning to ask certain questions about giving millions of dollars in abatement to a developer when we don't necessarily give abatements to other people. So Mr. Kosofsky and uh, Mr. Chapman, in terms of the other abatements that we've authorized in the past, were your expectations from those um, in terms of their finances to know the construction costs and the amount they were investing in the community? Did you ask them for anything else? No, no, no. And again, you know, you, there's concern about whether we should proceed. I think you have to look at the fact that the developer is putting up. $70 million, not $100,000, $70 million. And we're questioning his ability. The guy, the, the Anthony property has properties throughout the whole country. And we're going to question their financial ability? Yes, we are, Mr. Chapman, because he's not doing this as a charity for the town of Newington. He's doing it, it's hopefully, to make money. And I applaud that. $70 million. To make That's more than that, I hope. That's the way capitalism works. You invest 70 and you make X number of dollars more. He's not doing it as a charity for New England. Your, your point is made, but we do have other hands up. So okay. I'd like to just continue on. Councilor Rada? Yeah, uh, two questions. Um, how many years has, had, has this property said vacant uh, with no taxes paid to the town? Five. At least 20. Approximately 40. 
Okay. Um, and currently what has been, I'm just questioning, not, I'm not questioning you. I'm, I'm just want to, I'm looking at cost benefit. Mm -hmm. um, what's the, has been the current cost uh, to Newington from the time uh, of foreclosure or when that, that company stopped paying taxes? Um, how much of, how much have, have we had to put into that property? How much is that? I should say, how much has it cost us to date? I would probably suggest minimal. I know we fenced it in and we'd have to check with uh, safety services to find out if in fact there were any emergency calls there, be it police or fire. But other than fencing in the property, I don't think there would be any expenses. Oh, well, okay. There is, there is in a way because there were, I believe at the time that the town took the property, there was 800,000 or thereabouts Correct. dollars owed in taxes that the town never paid. got. Correct. We never got paid. Thanks. Council Mankey? Yeah, just a couple of points. <clears throat> First of all, I would also point out that, that those people who live in the apartments will have more than likely a car and those cars will be taxed in Newington. Is that correct? That's correct. The figure about six hundred dollars per car, two hundred forty cars. I'm not a great mathematician, but that's probably about a million dollars of revenue just from the automobiles. Right. So, and I, I guess my point is, I'd, I'd rather get at the end of end of ten years, we're gonna we're gonna collect, if I read this correctly, eight point three million dollars in taxes. Just on the property, not on the, not on the car. Right, just on the property, not on the cars. Mm -hmm. And then you add the cars to it. And then you'd also add if the assessments go up, if the property is in the assessment, the, the value of the property goes up over those 10 years, that would increase the taxes. Mm -hmm. um, if we don't approve this, and I think it's important to know that that, that $8 million, $8.3 million comes out of someone else's pocket. That's the taxpayers. That's correct. Because they have to, we have, there's a chance to make $8.3 million in 10 years. And if we don't do that, then those costs are going to get shifted to the taxpayers, the people that own, own homes right. and property. Actually, and uh, counselor, it's a little bit more because the automobiles are not part of the tax fixing agreement. Correct. So if they're a million dollar revenue in year one, it's going to continue to rise year after year. So it's not $8.3 million. It's 8.3 million plus, we'll just say a million each year, $10 million. So it's $18 million. Right. So, so that cost would get, get, if we don't develop this land, which is just now a big hole in the ground at this point, we're, we own it. We're getting no income from it. We're getting no benefit from it. Uh, that benefit would have those, those tax revenues would have to get mandated by the, the general taxpayers, which I think would probably revolt. I don't see any other hands up, so we'll move this to our next agenda for further consideration and possible vote. <laughs> Thank you, Councilor. Thank you all. Okay, let's see. Next item is written or oral communications from the town manager. Mr. Chapman, do you have anything for us? No, oh, just a reminder that the, uh, the dog park opening, uh, grand opening was supposed to happen today, but we had bad weather reports. It turned out to be nice in the afternoon, but the, the ribbon cutting will be at uh, starting at 4.30 tomorrow on John Stewart Drive. So um, those that may have showed up today, there was a representative from the park department to advise them uh, that today okay. was so, so uh, we're good to go for tomorrow. Cool. Okay, we'll see you there. Uh, Council Liaison Committee reports. Councilor Page. Thanks, Mayor. Um, just a couple. The um, fire commissioner's meeting, there was some discussion about the radio system. I'd love to get an update from Mr. Chapman on the status of that. There's concern about being gaps in communication for our fire department, and there may be for the police department, I don't know, and for EMS, I'd like to hear more about that because that was a pretty hot topic in that meeting. Um, and in the uh, environmental quality meeting, I appreciate the work that's being done to measure the air quality around the, uh, the quarry on Hartford Ave. It looks like those numbers are, have been consistently high. So there was discussion in that meeting about concerns of air quality and what might be done to mitigate that. There was also um, Councilor Braveman, uh, 
Councillor uh, Bedrako chimed in uh, with the work that um, Mr. Chapman and the staff are doing to address the geese problem. There was some humorous discussion about that, but I do seriously appreciate uh, Mr. Chapman and the staff's efforts and Mr. DeMeo to address that. I think we all do. It's gotten out of control and we want to be careful with all of our creatures on the planet and do this ethically, but we need to clean up that area. It's a hot mess. So I appreciate your efforts, everyone. Um, and I would just put a little plug. Well, no, that's a second comment. That's my comments. Thank you. That was the only two comments. Okay. okay. A few comments. All right. Um, Council Rada? Uh, yeah, just a um, uh, notification that um, the Aging and Disabled Commission was unable to meet again this month because there was not a quorum. So I, my concern is that we look into it and see where representation needs to be so that we can move ahead and start having, our, excuse me, having Sorry, our meetings. Did you say that again? Um. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna She's repeat listening myself. To everything. That wasn't mine though, that wasn't me. <laughs> mine does that often though. And um, I think the, the last um, Anna Reynolds meeting was um, canceled, but we are meeting Thursday at 515. Okay, good. Thank you. Councilor Nagel. Uh, just a comment about the uh, uh, Aging and Disabled Commission. Uh, earlier in the month, uh, uh, Jamie uh, said that uh, over the, not Jamie, our clerk, but uh, that indeed typically there is not a meeting in in September and she was considering it. So, uh, and the chairman uh, of that committee is on vacation, knew that for quite a while. Uh, there was no notification to myself or my wife that there was going to be looking for a quorum for a meeting or not. So there seems to be some miscommunication uh, or difference of opinion as to uh, the status of that meeting. Um, uh, I know the, at least from my understanding, uh, that uh, uh, obviously my wife and myself more than likely will be around next month uh, to go to that meeting and also uh, the chairman who was away on vacation, uh, her vacation will be over that time. So there's another person. So there's more factors here than just not having enough people uh, um, who've been appointed to that uh, commission. Okay. Just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. All right. Also, oh, just also development, um, economic yes. development did not meet this month either. Okay. So hopefully we will meet next month. Yes, all right. Yeah, okay. Next item is public participation. Any member of the public is able to come forward and speak with the council, either in person at the table or on Zoom. If you're on Zoom, you can raise your hand in the um, public participation in the participants window. And if you are on your phone using Zoom, star nine will raise your hand uh, so that we know you wanna be recognized. And anyone in the room is welcome to come up to the table as well. We do have one person in attendance with their hand up. Ms. Lyons. <laughs> Hi, Rose Lyons, 46 Elton Drive. And um, I came into the meeting a little bit late and I am, I'm guessing that somebody must have spoke about affordable housing earlier. And I know that this is not the time for any responses from anybody, but um, as a senior who has lived in this town for almost 75 years now, and I'm on a fixed income and finding it difficult to make ends meet, especially with the oil situation as it is and various other things. Um, I love seeing that there's apartments coming into town, but they're either high end or low end, or if it's the workforce affordable housing, I'm guessing that you have to be working and I fortunately am not working. I and others would really love to stay in the town that we were raised in, but um, it's getting to be very difficult. People are looking to other towns to move to for more affordable housing. Um, I just wonder whether or not there's been any effort on the town's part or if there's been any interest on any developers as to building affordable senior housing. And I'm not talking about the town doing it or the housing authority. I know the housing authority is not a town agency, but uh, it would be nice to see something come into town that us seniors on fixed incomes could afford. I know years ago, one of my neighbors uh, 
her income was low. She lived in the town for a certain amount of years, or I don't know what the actual criteria was, but her taxes were frozen. I don't expect to see that, and I do get the senior tax relief, and I'm very appreciative of that. But um, And I do have a daughter who's hopefully going to get some loan forgiveness for her loans, but with all these loan forgivenesses and other deals that people are getting, I'd wish they'd look more to the seniors and what their needs are as they age and want to stay in the town that they have been accustomed to living in. With that being said, thank you for all the efforts that you've made to bring the economic development into town. Unfortunately, if it's going to be 10 or 15 years before we're going to see any results of it, I probably will still be struggling to pay my taxes. So if there's any developers out there interested in the town of Newington and uh, trying to build some housing for low-income seniors, I'd certainly love to hear from them. Or I'd love them to contact the town, not me. Thank you again. Appreciate everything you do. Thank you, Ms. Lyons. Okay. Anyone else in the room want to come forward? There's no one online. Okay. We'll continue on then. Remarks by counselors. Yeah. Councilor Menke and then Councilor Page. Yeah, just to tack on to it, um, Mrs. Lyons' uh, note, I think um, for many of our seniors, this winter is <clears> going to be a, a difficult heating um, season uh, with, with the rising cost of, of, of home heating oil. <clears throat> I wonder if for a future agenda item, we couldn't have um, somebody from Human Services come in and tell <clears throat> and it described how people can apply for fuel assistance um, during the course of the winter. I think it's going to be going to be a, a expensive winter for a lot of us, um, but especially for some of our seniors. Thank you, Councilor Mankey. Councilor Page. Thanks, Mayor. I just wanted to thank Sue Mazzicoli for her comments earlier, and I wish her the best. I meant to say that earlier. She's been a big part of our town. Obviously, her family has. And she's been so involved more than I have over the years in town politics, I think, certainly. And I appreciate her and I wish her enough. I know we all wish her nothing but the best. And I was just going to say in listening to and I watched the recorded version, I wasn't able to make the live meeting for environmental quality, just that I want to continue to encourage residents to think about how they can reduce pesticide use on their lawns um, as an environmental issue. And um, also, as we approach, get through the winter and, and so forth, but approach next spring to consider the town, maybe even encouraging no mow May, which is where we don't mow our lawns. I know people's heads will explode until Memorial Day. And it gives our, our uh, pollinators, uh, the bees and butterflies and other creatures, a chance to populate. And it actually helps our environment. And it's obviously part of the ecosystem. And it's a good thing. So that was just a little side um, comment I want to make. Thanks, man. OK, thank you. Any other counselors? Hearing none, next item on our agenda is informational items. Um, so if anybody's interested, there are a few things in our packet this evening. The first is the 150th um, time to celebrate. They're having a dinner dance um, event at Indian Hill Country Club. It is on Thursday, September 22nd, 6 to 10 p.m. Uh, tickets are available. There is a QR code there. There's also a, um, a website link um, on this notification. And if you go into our packet, uh, agenda packet online, you'll be able to um, to see those as well. And then the second item is the- It has a news blast as well on our website. A news blast on our website as well. So you'll be able to find that pretty easily on our website. There are still tickets available, which I know we were worried they were gonna sell out. So um, there's still a chance. The ticket sales are not going as swimmingly as they- Okay, so get out there and get some tickets and come have a- Dance with us. Be fun. <laughs> I know be most fun. of us will be there, right? It will be fun. Yep. Um, next item is the AARP Smart Driver course. There's information in the packet on that. Um, this is on Wednesday, October 12th, 9 to 1. It's located at the Newington Senior and Disabled Center. And if you need to register, the number there is 860-665-8778. Um, and there's more information available in the flyer. And then the third item in our packet this evening is the Senior and Disabled Center highlights. Um, their upcoming uh, activities and events are on the memo for your review. And for anyone in the public that wants to see that, it's in our packet as well. Okay, that reaches the end of our agenda for this evening. So I will entertain a motion you, to adjourn. Mayor, before you oh, get there. Hold on, hold on. Just a reminder, 
We are not back here on Tuesday. We are back here on Thursday, September 29th. So it will be a Thank different you. one for us. So yeah, our meetings uh, for everyone out there are typically on Tuesday evenings, but our next meeting in two weeks is on the Thursday, the 29th. Um, in uh, observation of Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. Thank you. Um, so in deference to those that are celebrating Rosh Hashanah, we have moved our meeting yeah, from that Tuesday to the Thursday. Okay. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn? No motion. Moved by Councilor Nagel, Second. seconded by? Second. You. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? We stand adjourned at 9.18 p.m. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me see.